Hey guys, Sean here. I get a lot of questions about what's the point of buying gold, that money can be used to buy food, supplies or invest in the stock market. And that's a fair question and I think we really need to bring it to a higher level this time. You know, we're living in a world where the current financial system is engineered to allow the rich to get richer and it's getting harder for the poor to make the leap. I mean, just take a look at your own life, I'm sure you can see tons of examples around you. And I believe the most powerful factor that's making this happen is inflation. Now, the very simplistic thinking is that inflation just makes things more expensive, and that's true. But it's because things are getting more expensive that simply earning and saving money is never enough, right? You'll forever be in a hamster wheel. And I think one of the biggest issues today is people not being able to control our financial destiny, and nothing saps the human spirit more than not making progress. And in this video, I really want to have a deeper conversation about this. Now, inflation is not as simple as we think, and I think the majority of people just brush it off. And the simplest way we do it is to just change our spending habits, right? If steak becomes too expensive, we'll just buy the cheaper chicken. If coffee from a cafe is $5, we just grind our own. But the bigger issue is that many of us are still working in jobs that we hate. You know, that sacrifice all used to have meaning and make sense. We could tough it out and stash our money away to eventually buy a home or a car or whatever we want. But when inflation is soaring and we all know 8.5% is the official number, but it feels more like 10 to 20% in things like food and fuel. The thing is, to just keep pace with inflation, you need at least a 10% pay raise every single year compounded without fail. But the biggest issue is that your previous cash sitting in a bank is really losing purchasing power. It's bleeding away 5-10% of your value every single year, regardless of your future paycheck. And to me, that's frightening, guys. And that's why we are all forced to invest. Literally, for most people, it's either you take a risk in the stock market or you watch your money evaporate away. And this is one reason why I buy gold, right? And it's to slowly purchase my freedom back. Now, I know the word freedom is very questionable. Some of you believe freedom's lying down on the beach in Tahiti, sipping a martini. But at least to me, it's really about doing the things that are meaningful to me. And I think to really accomplish this, we need to transcend inflation. We need to use it as a tool and make it work for us. And the only reliable way to do it is to have assets that produce income that actually scales with inflation. And I've thought long and hard about this, and there are basically three ways to make it happen, right? Real estate that brings in cash flow where you can jack up the rents as an evil landlord, or you can start a business where you can charge more when the cost of living goes up and prices just go through the roof. You can charge more for your services and your products, and the stock market where you can get paid dividends from your equities. But I just want to focus on real estate and how gold can help us on a journey towards it. Now, I'm a small business owner and I can tell you it's not an easy endeavor. There are days where I want to pull my hair out and many sleepless nights, chasing clients for money, bringing in new business, employees giving problems, and things always seem to break when you least expect it. When it rains, it really pours, right? And when we're talking about the stock market, that isn't always straightforward as well. Now, on the whole, if you threw your money to an index fund like the S&P 500, you would have enjoyed like around 8 to 10% annual returns every year, which is great. You are betting on American innovation, and I don't think you can really go wrong with that in the long term. But we can see many large cap tech stocks like Netflix, Facebook, and even Tesla crashing 10, 20, or even 30% within a week, which really begs the question if the market is currently overpriced. And truth be told, I don't know. There's so much uncertainty that I can't give you a definite answer. Plus, with so much uncertainty and chaos around the weakening dollar, the dollarization, and Russia trying to get the ruble on the world stage, these are things we must all factor in as well as we make our investment decisions. And this is why I stand by real estate and farmland being the two best hard assets to own that can really transcend inflation. And it's really simple to understand why. Your property will eventually appreciate over time if you are smart about buying it, and you can jack up the rent year after year, be the evil landlord thing, right? And farmland is also awesome if you know how to start your own farm and start selling your produce. Food prices are always going up, but it's going to be tougher because not everyone has the ability to access farmland, especially if you're in a land scarce country. So I'll just keep the conversation on real estate here. And the big problem is that getting that initial big down payment is going to be hard, right? Many people just can't afford them anymore, 
For most cities in a developed world, a home will cost easily between half a million dollars to a million or over that, especially if it's a decent sized one that you want to live in or rent out. And at the rate that most people save, which is around 10 or 20%, and I'm being really generous here, it will take forever to even meet that down payment threshold. So let's say you're earning like five grand a month and you can save $1,000 after taxes, it will take you around 10 to 20 years just for that down payment. And with inflation soaring at eight to 10% a year, you better double that time frame, right? And it's that threshold that prevents people from letting inflation work for them. They just can't make the down payment and locking that mortgage. And this is why the rich just gets richer because the money they get, whether it's from their business, income or inheritance, it's enough for them to immediately meet that threshold and take on debt and start leveraging and let inflation work for them. And that's truly the state of the world uh, we are in today. There's not much point moaning and groaning about it. And this is why I stack gold, right? And I believe many of us do as well, is to preserve our money without much risk so that we can eventually meet that threshold. And the biggest pushback I get from people is that gold doesn't produce an income, it's a non-productive asset, but that isn't seeing its true purpose. It's not meant to be something productive, it's meant to preserve your wealth so that you can use it when the time comes. Gold is just meant to store your purchasing power, there's nothing complex about it, right? It has been doing so for thousands of years and can't be printed by the Federal Reserve into oblivion. And when I buy this gold coin over here, it gives meaning to my savings, to my labor, and that added security that my time will have the same value in five or 10 years when I want to cash it in. So if you're looking to make money from scratch or grow money fast, gold isn't the answer, guys. I'd rather you start a business, speculate in the stock market if you're good enough, or get a high paying job. It's much faster that way to build that initial seed money. And if you have another investment vehicle that guarantees you a better return, then you should power your money into that seriously. But for many of us, real estate is gonna be the destination and buying gold is likely gonna be a necessary step to get there. But what if a deflation happens? Will gold help to protect our wealth when every asset is crashing? And a big problem many of us have is valuing things in terms of dollars and only dollars and we need to start pricing things in terms of gold. We can see this during the Great Depression in 1930, the 1980 recession and the housing crash of 2008. You could actually buy a house with less gold during that time period in terms of gold, the prices of real estate actually fell. And the reason why gold fell less than other assets is probably because in a deflationary cycle, all the debt implodes and both the stock market and housing are more leveraged than gold. People will be in a panic and they'll rush to cash and with inflation being so high, they'll just park it in gold. And that's why the relative purchasing power of gold soared during those time periods. So whether it is fighting against inflation to slow down the erosion of your purchasing power or in the deflation where everything's crashing, I see a good argument to have at least some gold with you, right? I'm not saying that gold is an all-weather asset because it is not, but it has been proven to protect your wealth. The ride is really going to be rocky and it's essential that you have holding power as well, right? Gold has seen a dramatic rise from $250 to over two grand in 20 years and that doesn't show how much gold has gained value. It's really a reflection of how much value the dollar and fiat currencies have lost. And lastly, we need to talk about counterparty risk. There are very few assets in the world that are outside of the financial system, and that is a very important point we need to touch on. There are a lot of weird things happening lately. We have seen brokerages like Robinhood restrict trading, the LME shut down nickel trading, and many customers of banks are getting compromised by scammers, right? And even Bitcoin exchanges and wallets are getting hacked. Now, having your money in the financial system is convenient, and I value how integrated the whole system is. Transferring money here and there with a single swipe is awesome, but you need to have some analog wealth with you, something physical where you can just immediately take and use or exchange for cash. And I can't think of anything as valuable, portable, and a proper store of value as gold. And that is why I consistently stack some gold. Even some of my stock dividends are channeled back to precious metals instead of accumulating more shares. I find that extra important, especially today, 
where interest rates are rising and inflation is still soaring, right? It's anyone's guess if the stock market might implode in six months down the road. And that's why gold provides me with that extra safety. At the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you and really consider all of your options. No one can tell you if gold is the right fit for you and for many people, it really isn't. If you aren't making a lot, having an extra gold coin won't help you much. You'll be better off using that money to build a business or invest in yourself and learn a skill or a trade. But if you're saving up for something big like a house or farmland, stashing away some gold might be a good idea. I do invest in the stock market as well, but every month or two, I take some money and I buy some gold because I'm quite uncertain about how the future looks and I need to know that I can fully utilize my wealth when the time comes. Right now, we are living through the greatest financial experiment. The experts call it modern monetary theory, but I call it unlimited borrowing and money printing. We are seeing the immediate effects of too much money chasing too few goods and this could get worse down the road. I think a lot of the messaging in gold is quite confusing and there are still some people who think it's a get-rich-quick scheme. But it has to be a conversation about risk and reward. Gold does appreciate over time, but because the market is so liquid, you shouldn't go in thinking that it's Bitcoin and will 10x in a year. You know, there has been talk about a new monetary system and how gold could be revalued, but honestly, all that remains to be seen. We could get decades of more fiat currencies and inflation is very likely to be persistent. So yes, I think we all needed to have this talk to clarify what gold really is and its true purpose in our portfolio and lives. So let me know what you think about gold and what it means to you. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more gold and silver videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.